Well, welcome to the show, my friends. My name is Jay Connor, known as the Private Money Authority. And welcome to Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. And I want to thank you for joining in. We're celebrating our one year anniversary right now. And we've got almost 75,000 downloads and listens. And the show just continues to grow thanks to you showing up and enjoying the show and interacting with us. And so if you're brand new to the show, what we do on here is we talk about all things real estate investing, single family houses, commercial. Most of the time we talk about single family, but we do cover the entire gamut. And for the past year, I've been having just amazing experts and guests who are the movers and shakers all across the United States and even outside the United States that are actually doing the business and making things happen. And so today is no different, but before I bring on my good friend and guest today, I've got a gift, a free gift for all of my audience here. And this gift is a free online class on demand waiting for you to go learn how to get funding for your deals, regardless of what your mortgage broker or your banker would say. This has got nothing to do with hard money. This is private money. So on this online class that I have free for you to go watch and learn, the website is www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. And for those of you that are watching the video, we'll put it right up here. So it's free to go learn www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. On that free training, you'll learn the five steps from saying hello to getting over $2,150,000 in funding, just like I did in 90 days when I was cut off from the banks. So go check it out. So with that, I'm so excited to have my good friend, fellow mastermind member and business real estate investing entrepreneur on the show here with me today. Now, let me tell you about this fellow. This guy knew he wanted to be a real estate investor all the way back to when he was in ninth grade. And he bought this book on how to buy real estate with no money down. And so fast forward just a few years, my guest has got quite the story. He has been involved in over 6,000 real estate transactions. Back in 2010, he was the number one team with Keller Williams all across the nation. Grew it to number one in less than two years. And today, here's what his real estate investing business looks like. He is now doing over 200 deals a year with little to no involvement himself. Talk about knowing how to scale and automate a business. He knows how to do it. So with that, it's my pleasure, friends, to introduce to you my good friend, Mr. Brad Chandler. Brad, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you for having me. What a great welcome. I appreciate it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Brad, you and I first got to know each other. I want to say, well, time goes by so fast, but I want to say it's probably been about a year and a half ago, wouldn't you say? In San Diego. I think we ran into each other walking back next to the pool. Yeah. We did. I remember at the bottom of the staircase, we turned, ran into each other almost literally, shook hands and introduced ourselves to each other. And, uh, and I tell you, Brad, my hat is off to you. You've got such an amazing story. So the things that I want to talk about here on the show today, Brad, regarding your story is primarily three things. I know you're in multiple markets now. You are in three different markets and you're going to be growing that. I think you said the 30 different markets in a short period of time. You're big on sales and marketing. We want to talk about that on uh, finding deals. And also, you know a lot about building a team. I mean, my lands, if you've become number one with Keller Williams in less than two years, you definitely know something about building a team. But before we get into all that, tell us what, to, I know you read the book. Okay, I get that when you were in ninth grade, but when did you really start your real estate investing career? When did you do your first deal? And besides the book, really, you know, how'd you really get interested in it and involved? So let's rewind back to late 2003, excuse me, 2002. I guess it was a December 2002. An investor bought my neighbor's house in Vienna, Virginia, fixed it up and resold it. And I went and talked to him because he was actually teaching seminars. And he had a bunch of people through the house. So I was like, what's going on over there? Something weird. So anyway, it wasn't weird. He said, yeah, I buy houses at 30% below market from distressed sellers. I fix them up and I resell them. So that was in December. My son had just been born. 
So I'd come home and after working a full-time job and put him to bed around eight, work from eight to midnight, every freaking night, weekends, pounding signs, you know, we buy houses, signs, handwriting hundreds of envelopes. And it took me eight long months to find my first deal, Jay. Wow. And then in July and August of that year of 2003, I bought six houses. I quit my full-time job in October of 2003. And here we are close to 3,000 houses and, you know, many transactions more than that uh, and making it work. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. I think the first thing I'd like for us to talk about and share with our audience, Brad, is, you know, regardless of whether you're wholesaling or you're flipping or whatever you're doing, you, we got to find the deals, right? We got, right. we got we to find the discounted properties or, well, not necessarily discounted. We have ways, you know, that you can buy at full retail and still make money. But First, tell us what does your business look like today? What kind of deals are you doing? And then let's talk about your favorite marketing methods as to how are you finding the deals these days? So we are doing probably 90% wholesaling. So we're always looking for buyers and we list all of our deals at expresshomebuyers.com forward slash deals. So if you want to go check out our deals, that's where you go. So we wholesale about 90% and we're back to fixing and flipping some for the first about 13, 14 years of the business, Jay, we really didn't know anything about wholesaling. We just bought everything and fixed it up. So that's what we're doing now. It's a nice mix and we're taking advantage of the market. The market's obviously hot. So we're riding the wave of hotness in the real estate market. And in terms of marketing, we've probably done more deals in the 17, 16 years I've been in business using TV advertising. And I know really? it's not something that's real popular because I know it is, it's expensive, but we started back, you know, probably spending five grand a month in 2003. And, you know, we've had months where we spent well over a hundred thousand dollars a month. Wow. So, so right now is television your number one lead generator? So it's a combination of television and online. If you guys, no matter where you are in the country, if you type sell my house fast in your city or we buy houses fast in your city, you'll probably find Express Home Buyer. So since 2003, I put a lot of emphasis, time, money, and resources into the SEO, search engine optimization. So we get a lot of leads. If you just look at it in terms of leads, Jay, it, by and far, it's, it's the SEO. When you look at it in the specific markets that we operate now, which is Baltimore, Birmingham, Washington, D.C., and we're entering Hampton Roads, it mostly is, it, it's a combination of, it's a close race between TV and online. Interesting, interesting. So, so you just answered one of my questions that I had in the back of my mind, and that is, how in the world are you going to grow from three markets to 30 markets? In what period of time would you say? So three years is our goal. So after running this business for about 14 years and always having dreams of, of becoming a national company, my partner and I just came to the realization that we did not have the skill set. So we brought in a professional management team who has experience growing and scaling businesses. So we brought in a new CEO and a, and a new CFO. So between the, those two and my two partner or my partner, and then we have a high level marketing guy. That's kind of our management team. And we're going to figure it out. <laughs> I hear you. Well, you know, you just said, I mean, you're already, you, you and your team are already building your SEO, uh, you know, for on the internet. It sounds like nationwide, right? We get over 1,500 leads a month right now across the United States. Holy moly, guacamole. 1,500 <laughs> leads. Now, what's the definition of a lead? Is a lead getting a property lead sheet filled out or is a lead somebody raising their hand and we're going to now attempt to get a property lead sheet filled out? A lead is someone who has put their contact information in and said, I have an interest in getting an offer to sell my home. Nice, nice. So to get 1,500 leads per month, putting aside your CEO and CFO salary and bonuses and all that, just the hard cost, how much are you spending on mark, investing in marketing to get 1,500 leads? In other words, what's your cost per lead? And I know that's going to vary between internet and television. So you're going to find this hard to believe, but the 1,500 a month is just on the organic side. So we generate probably another six to 700 on top of that, that we actually pay for. So the 1,500, you know, we are not paying much. We, we probably have an ongoing two or three grand a month SEO contract with somebody. So very little, but if you look at overall in our markets, a cost per lead, it, it's anywhere from, you know, two, depending on lead source, 150 to $300 a lead. Gotcha. So here's my question. 
Yeah, I want to go to your seminar, okay? I want to, I want to learn how you get 1,500 organic leads a month. That's pretty cool and impressive. Yeah, we have a very high domain authority. Again, it's not something you can do overnight. It's taken us literally 16 years. We've, we've just, we've been out there a long time. We've had a great name. We've built lots of links. We've built lots of content. So it's, you know, if, if you type, if you type, we buy houses signs, we're on the first, at least last time I checked, which was a couple months ago, we were on the first page of Google. So it's just, it's all about content and links and just having a quality site. Nice. Nice. Now, one thing you said a moment ago is you said, you know, for quite a few years, you just fixed up everything. You know, you were buy and flip, buy and flip, buy and flip. And now you've really gotten into doing quite a bit of wholesaling. And that makes sense with you wanting to, you know, grow the business. But here's my question. I know my audience wants to know, what's the formula? How do you decide what am I going to flip? Now I'm talking about for deals right in your own, you know, right in your own market where you're doing the deals. Sure. How do you decide what am I going to flip and what am I going to wholesale? So I think it's two ways we look at it. Number one, if we're having a trouble selling it or we're getting an offer that's too low and we know how much we can put in and fix and flip it for, we'll do that. There are times where you just can't wholesale it. Like something is the, the, the seller doesn't want anyone in the house. We promised them they wouldn't have anyone in the house. In those situations, we just take the house down and, and renovate it or just resell it. So there's so, no, no magic formula, Jay. So would you say that your preferred exit strategy is now wholesaling? And then if for some reason you can't wholesale it, then you just do it yourself? Absolutely. Because the hardest part of this business, Jay, you've, you've done enough deals. The hardest part of this business is the construction side of it. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and it's risky. Like, you know, a lot of gurus don't teach this, but when you take down a house, as soon as you buy that house, boom, you're on the hook and they, someone can come back and sue you for anything. When you wholesale a house, you never take possession of it. So there's a lot less risk, no capital uh, needed. So what is your formula for wholesaling a deal. So for example, let, let me, let me explain myself. So when you're making an offer to put it under contract, what's the formula as to what's the maximum that you're willing to, you know, put a house or put a house under contract for. So let's start with that. And then let's go to the assignment side. So, you know, I got this property, I got this lead. What's the calculation look like? So we're generally buying or trying to, or getting the properties under contract at 65 to 75% of after repair value, less what it's going to cost us to fix it up. Uh, again, you can stretch to 75 if you're in a market like Arlington, which is just outside of DC, you can throw a rock over, you know, the, the Potomac river and hit it because we know how fast things are going to sell. And it, typically it's a higher price. So less percentage still means ultimate, you know, real dollar spread. And then we try to wholesale them. Again, it depends on the market, but we try to wholesale them from 75 to 83% of ARV minus repairs. Okay. So you're wholesaling it or selling it at 75 to 83%. So you do, I assume you're doing assignments, right? We are. Yes. Okay. So what's the sweet spot? Now, as you grow to 30 markets, this is going to change, right? But in the market you're at now, what would you say is your sweet spot or your range of after repaired values? So DC is probably in the th mid 300 range. Gotcha. Gotcha. And when you go to put it under contract, how much earnest money do you do on, on putting it under contract? We typically only do $500. Gotcha. Yeah. Here in Eastern North Carolina, we're cheap. I do $100, right? <laughs> and I assume you've got a process in place to where that money is delivered to your closing agent's trust account, right? So it, when we're wholesaling it, no, we're, we're the, the buyer's coming with all the money. No, I'm talking about the earnest money to put it under contract. Oh, oh yes, 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 it is. We, 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 yep. We have to get that over to them because you know, it's not technically a valid contract until you have some consideration put up. Correct. Now, do you have any wiggle room or wiggle clauses on in the event you can't wholesale it for whatever reason you decide, you know, this deal is not a deal that we should be buying. What's your get out of Dodge strategy after you go under contract? 
So we do have a 21 day feasibility period, but we hardly ever exercise that because we hate to go back to the seller like a lot of our competitors and retrade them. So, you know, we typically will, unlike a lot of wholesalers that don't have the cash, we've got a lot of, lot of cash you know, or at least access to it and investors, private money, just like you preach. So we'll, we'll, we'll generally take it down and then, you know, rehab it and sell it. Got you. So I'm really interested and I know my audience is as well. I'm really interested in knowing your process of how does this machine work in three different markets to where, you know, you're involved in little to no time. So uh, walk, paint us a picture of what your team looks like. I mean, from like, you got the lead flow coming in. Who does that go to? Are you using virtual lead managers? Do you have acquisitionists? Who does what, when on touching that deal? You know, how do you put the boots on the ground going to look at the house? You know, who's negotiating with the seller? What's, what's that whole picture look like of this machine? Sure. So starting on marketing, we have, we really only have one high level marketing person now because the other marketing person is actually taking on an acquisition role as a manager. So we have a full-time marketing person who obviously drives the leads. We have three full-time VAs that help take calls and do some lead management. We have two inside sales associates here in headquarters in Springfield. And then we have three, home, we call them home buying specialists. I know a lot of people like to call them acquisition managers, but we for years have been calling them home buying specialists. So we have three in DC, we have one in Baltimore, we have one in, um, in Birmingham, and we're looking for one in Hampton Roads. So if any of your listeners are in Hampton Roads and want to apply, just go to expresshomebuyers.com forward slash careers. And we've got a, a bunch of different job postings up there. And if you're in another market that we're not, you, that we're not in yet, go ahead and fill it out and just put a note that, Hey, you're, you're interested in this position in this market. If we ever come across. Nice. Okay. So let's go through it step by step. So it's lead like, comes in. Yeah. Lead, and I didn't answer your full question because I got, I got excited about the, the Hampton road. So, so that is our, that's our acquisition and marketing. And then we have a full-time CFO we have my partner, myself, who do a very, you know, just whatever's needed, opening new markets is what we're really focused on. And then on the disposition side, we have a head of dispositions, we have a transaction coordinator, we have kind of assistant transaction coordinator, and then we have actually an acquisition gentleman who all his job is, is to help comp and value properties. Nice, nice. So walk us through from the time, what happens from the time? So I know you got your marketing person that's getting the leads to come in. They're, they're, and, I, and I suppose mo are, is most of your call to action, people going to your, a seller is going to your website, filling out the information on their property and submitting that uh, request for an offer online? It's probably about 70, 30, 70 online, 60 actually, or 30% still actually picking up the phone and calling us. Yeah, so the cool. call comes in to our inside sales associates. If they can't answer, then it rolls over to our virtual assistants. And then from there, it rolls over to a call center. And our goal is with the inside sales associate is to set an appointment based on certain parameters then uh, for the home buying specialist to, to go out and actually view the house and try to get under contract. Gotcha. I had an expert, uh, another, another real estate entrepreneur such as yourself doing really, really high volume on the show a few weeks ago. And I'm starting to hear more and more of this. And so I'm interested to know if you have implemented this in your business. And that is the call to action. Instead of dialing a phone number or et cetera, the, the response that they are getting now, the call to action that's getting more call uh, response than any of the call to action is text, make me an offer to this number. And so people are texting make me an offer to whatever the number is. And then immediately the auto responder comes back to their cell phone number with their website, which they click on to go fill out the application. Have you done any of that call to action with texting? We have Jay and much to my surprise, it's actually even in the TV commercials, we haven't seen the response that we thought we were going to see. Interesting. So on the TV commercial, is your number one call to action winner still pick up the phone and dial a number? No, we still think that probably 70% of the people who see the TV commercial go to expresshomebuyers.com or just Google Express Home Buyers and then fill out a form or call us from the website instead of calling us. But 10 years ago, Jay, 
it was probably 70% of the people picked up the phone and 30% of the people went to the internet. I agree. Do you have a way of tracking that or some kind of code or any kind of thing that when they go to your website from the TV commercial that it like, you know, you're able to measure it and track it? It doesn't work because no one ever puts in the, the URL string. Right. Everyone always probably Googles expresshomebuyers.com. <laughs> right, right. I got you. So how have you all been able to determine your, your best guess of 30% pick up the phone and the other 70% well, we see on the website? Through Google Analytics and our market research, we see people, you know, searching express home buyers. And gotcha. the only way they're going to search express home buyers is if they, you know, see the TV commercial. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Well, let's change channels a little bit. And that is on, um, on scaling the business and building a team. So, you know, you've got a track record. I mean, you've got a phenomenal team you've put together right here, you and your business partner with what you're getting ready to do with Express Home Buyers. But you've also got that phenomenal success of, and you know, in less than two years, growing to be the number one Keller Williams team so give us your experience and what you've learned on what are your secrets to building a team? I know that's a very wide and vague question, but I do it on purpose because I, I want to bubble up to your mind what's com what comes first on locating people, good people, building a team, and keeping good people. So it's a pretty simple answer. Uh, the answer is good people. Good people will fix almost anything. You can have the greatest systems in the world, but if you put crappy people in there, they're going to break the systems, right? Right. So we, we put a real focus on getting high quality people. We actually use the kind of the model that, that Keller Williams has used to grow from, you know, zero agents to 175,000 world, worldwide agents. And it's just a really comprehensive upfront process of screening people, spend a lot of time hiring them. And then obviously, you know, the old hire slow, fire fast. We do that, but we, we spend a lot of time getting the people in. We figure out what makes them tick. What is it in their personal life that drives them? And then we say, hey, if you can help us achieve these things, we're going to help you achieve those things. So that's part of what keeps the people, you know, dedicated and, and here long term. So obviously, I know that they find out about the careers at the website you just gave out. But, you know, let's say you've got a, a small operator. All right. You know, you, you got, you've got a real estate entrepreneur an investor that's just looking for an acquisitionist, right? To find the help. Where do you go look? Like in your local market, how do you find these people to help you? So network, you, that's the greatest place. Call up lenders that you know, title companies that you know, anyone you've done business with, go to your local RIAs. Do that and then, you know, you can also, Indeed is huge, but we've had a lot of success through LinkedIn. It can be expensive at times. You don't have to get the, pay the big bucks for the recruiter seat. Just connect with people, look around on LinkedIn, poke around, post your job ad, you know, connect with a bunch of people. And the best source of new team members is a referral. That's what Keller Williams taught for years. And I still believe it. It's just when you're growing as rapidly as we are, it's kind of hard. But for you, what you're asking about the mom and pop or the small operator, that's what I would do. If, if I were put in Spokane, Washington tomorrow and I had to start over, I would just go network like crazy and ask people, hey, this is who I'm looking for. Who have you worked with in the past that fits this model? Excellent advice. And I couldn't agree more. And I'll tell you, as you were, as you were saying that, the, the thought that came to mind, Brad, was I can't remember where I heard this recently, but the question to ask yourself is, is do you have somebody on your team today that if you were interviewing them to hire, would you still hire them today? Right. <laughs> <laughs> if, the, if the answer is no, then you gotta do yourself a favor and the employee a favor and get rid of him or her. People think that they're doing the person a favor. They're like, you know what? Pick any day. It's we're we're in June now, coming on July. Well, it's the summertime. You know, let me wait till after the summer to fire them. No, it's like being in a bad relationship. You're doing your partner or your employee a disservice. Let them go and let them find somewhere where they're gonna thrive. If they're not thriving with you, let them go. Exactly. Exactly. Good advice. So when time permits, and we do have a couple of minutes left on the show, Brad, I always like to ask certain people that I'm very impressed with as to their personal, I just love personal development. 
And I, I just know you well enough to know that you probably have been a personal development junkie for a few years now. So who do you follow? Who do you listen to? Who is it that motivates you? Who have you read in the past? Who do you like to read after, you know, your top favorite books that have, you know, just really taken you to the next level? Well, Gary Keller has made a big impression on my life. I've, I've met him personally. I've got a picture of when we were the number one agent with him. Really great guy. Obviously, has been super successful. His One Thing book is pretty amazing. Ray Dahlia, who wrote, he's a billionaire, hedge fund guy, VC guy. He wrote a book called Principles, which is quite amazing. And then, you know, right now I get a lot from when I'm driving half an hour back and forth to work. I'm not listening to radio. You know, I'm not. I'm listening to stuff. You know this because you're in the mastermind. There's probably 130 members. Well, I feel like I listen to all but probably 10 presentations. And it's probably because not that I didn't say I don't want to listen to this person, but it's hard managing listening to 130. So I just am a constant learner in personal development. I I love it. Man, I'm glad you brought that up because I know all of our fellow members, you know, presentations are archived through the app. But And I've watched quite a few, but I never thought about being able to ride down the road and just listen to them. Yep. I I download on my computer, my MacBook. I set my MacBook on my seat next to me and I go at like 1.7 X so I can just fly (laughs) through them. I love it. Well, you know, you're a testament, Brad, to being an ongoing learner and always being hungry to continue to learn. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, And you know what I've observed, and I know you have too, and that is, you know, this business that we're in, like any other business, it's, it's living and breathing and moving. And what worked, you know, two years ago may not be working so good today. So we need to stay plugged in with each other and continue to help each other out. So parting words, Brad, I tell you what, if you were brand new in real estate investing and you were starting all over, but you knew back then what you know now, what would you start out doing differently? Wow. I think, I think it's focus, Jay. I had the persistence, so I wouldn't change that. It's the focus where I lost. We, we made so much money in the first five months of 2005 that I literally was thinking, this business is easy. I'm smarter than everyone else. I'm going to retire early. And then, man, I got slapped in the face because I bought three development deals that ended up costing us well over $3 million in mistakes that we lost. So just focus. It's, it's so important. As entrepreneurs, and you're one and I'm one, we love to say, let's do this and let's do that and let's do this. I would get really good at one thing. And right now it's wholesaling because the market, it's great. It's set up perfectly because the market's so hot. So that's what I would do. I would just focus, focus, focus. Well, since that's your answer and I agree with you, uh, we've got a fellow member. uh, Do you know Chris Miles in the Mastermind? I have met him, yes. Yeah, I think his website is moneyripples.com. Anyway, I had him on the show not long ago, and he turned me on to this book, and I ordered it right away. And since you're all about focus, I recommend this book to you if you haven't heard of it. And I never heard of it. It's called The Pumpkin Plan. Have you heard of The Pumpkin Plan? Yes, I think I've read it. Oh, my lands. It's amazing. And so anyway, I don't have time here on the show to tell everybody about what The Pumpkin Plan is about. It tells, because of focus, how it is those farmers that grow those prize-winning pumpkins, grow them so big, and it's all about focus because they cut off all the other pumpkins that aren't growing and just let all the juice on the vines get to this one pumpkin, and that's where all the focus goes. Yes, sir. Yeah, awesome. Brad, you have been fantastic. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here on the show with me. And one more time, give out your two URLs, the one for real estate investors that are looking for deals and let's do that one first. Yep. That's www.expresshomebuyers.com forward slash deals. All right. And your other website for those that may want to have an interest of working with you and your team. That's expresshomebuyers.com forward slash careers. That's awesome. Brad, thank you so much. Thank you, Jay. Well, Well, folks, I'm Jay Connor, the private money authority, wishing you all the best. Hope you enjoyed the show. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. And if you're watching on one of our YouTube channels, be sure and subscribe. Leave comments below and we'll get all of your questions answered. Looking forward to seeing everyone on the next show. Here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level. See you on the next one. Bye for now.